Hey there, it's Izzy here again. In this video, we'll take a look at a few different ways to create animations in Final Cut Pro using keyframes. And when I talk about animations, I'm not talking about like animated cartoons or anything like that. I'm talking about just making changes to things over time. And so to demonstrate this, I have a very basic project set up. And by the way, I'm going to make the assumption that if you're watching this video, you've maybe heard of keyframes before, but you're not really familiar with them, or maybe you just want to learn more about them. But I'm going to start at the very basics, and we're going to start with fundamentals of how to work with keyframes, what they are, how they they work, how you can use them. Okay, so let's start by moving the playhead to the beginning of this project. You can see I've got a video clip and then a title attached to it as a connected clip. And then if I hit the space bar and play this back, then you'll see that the title pops on. And then when it gets to the end of the title, then it pops off again. I'll stop the playback. So let's say that hypothetically, we don't want to have the title just pop on and off. I want to have it slide in from the side. So maybe it'll start off screen here. It'll slide into its position, hang out there for a few seconds, and then slide off again. All right, so if I want to do that, this is a great opportunity to use fundamental keyframe concepts. So what we'll do is we'll start by moving the playhead to the very beginning of the title. So now the playhead is on the first frame of the title there. I've got my title selected, and then I'm going to come up here and open up the inspector, go to the video inspector, and then under transform, position is what we want to look at. So position is called a parameter, and then we have the X position, and then the value right now is zero, and then we have the Y position, and the value right now for Y position is zero, and so since Y is the vertical position and X is the horizontal position, what we're going to animate is this X value. Now when I say animate, basically all we're going to do is we're going to set two values. We're going to have a start value for X and an end value for X. And then Final Cut Pro will create the animation as it changes from one value, like point A to point B. It'll just automatically create the animation to go from one value to the other one. So what we'll do is we'll start by adding a keyframe to this position where the playhead is. So this is an important thing to know. You position the playhead first so it knows where to put the keyframe. Final Cut Pro needs to know where you're going to put the keyframe. And so I'm putting it right here on the first frame of this title, which happens to be 12 frames into the project. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll come up here. And if I hover to the right side of the parameters here, you can see that there's this little gray diamond that appears as I hover over these parameters. And that's the add keyframe button. It only appears when you're hovering there. You can see that if I move my mouse pointer away, then the add keyframe button goes away. But if I position my mouse pointer over this parameter, then I can come over here to the right side and I can click on this button and it'll add a keyframe. Now the term keyframe comes from the concept where animators used to say, okay, here's a keyframe with a key position. So maybe you have a character that's in a certain pose, that's a key position. So that'd be a keyframe. And then a little bit later, you have another key position. So that would be another keyframe. And then somebody else would come in and do the tweening or the betweening type of animations where they draw all the different poses to get from one keyframe to the other keyframe. That's where this concept comes from. Now here, we're not dealing with cartoon animation. We're dealing with just having a title slide in and out. But what we're going to do is still use the same concept of having two keyframes and then let Final Cut Pro do the animation to get from one position to the other one. So now that I've got this keyframe set up, you can see if I move my mouse pointer away, that's now yellow. That lets me know that there's a keyframe on that frame for that value. So here, this position parameter has a keyframe you can see from the yellow diamond, and it's only there, it's only a yellow diamond if the playhead is sitting right on that frame. If I move the playhead somewhere else, then what happens is that diamond goes away because there's not a keyframe where the playhead is right now. Now, if you want to very easily get back to the, the previous position that has a keyframe on it, you can just use this previous keyframe button here. I'll just click on that, and you'll see that the playhead moved back to the first frame in the title. Now, we want the title to start off screen. Now, right now, it's on the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and drag on this X value here. I'll just click and drag it to the left to position it. So there we go. The title's moving off the screen. And once it's no longer showing up, I can leave it right there. So it looks like about negative 630. I'll just type that in here, negative 630, and then hit return. Okay, so that's the first keyframe. In other words, on this frame right here, the value of the X value, the X position here is negative 630. Now what I can do is move the playhead forward in time like this. And let's say that at the one second mark, I'll just move the playhead right there. Now you can see I'm at one second. Let's say that I want this to be in its original position. So I wanna have it go to the zero value. If I just click and drag this to the right, then as I get close to zero, 
I'm gonna just go ahead and change it to zero there. Okay, so now the value is zero and I didn't have to manually add another keyframe. You can see Final Cut Pro added that keyframe for me. And this is one thing to be careful of. Anytime you make any changes to a value of a parameter that already has a keyframe, Final Cut Pro will automatically create more keyframes. So if you're not paying attention to that, you can accidentally end up with more keyframes than you intended to have. In this case, we have two keyframes. We set up one at the very beginning. If I click the previous keyframe button, there's the first keyframe, the value use negative 630 and then I'll click the next keyframe button here's the second keyframe at the one second mark and the value is zero there and so now with those two keyframes in place then what Final Cut Pro does is it creates what's called interpolation interpolation is the automatic calculation of the values in between those two frames so that we create a nice smooth animation going from one position to the other one or one value to the other one let's take a look I'm gonna move the playhead to the beginning hit the space bar and we should see the title slides in from the side. And sure enough, it does. Okay, so now that's the basic concept. Two keyframes with two different values. You'll have some sort of change in those values to get from one value to the other one. Now, a very common type of situation is to have something animate to a certain position, hold there for a little bit, and then animate away from that position. So that's what we'll do here too to demonstrate this because in this very common scenario, it actually takes four keyframes. Two keyframes to get the item into position and then two keyframes to get it out of position. So what I'll do is I'll move the playhead to uh, maybe somewhere around here, something like that, doesn't have to be exact. And then I'll come up here and add another keyframe and I'm going to manually add this keyframe because Final Cut Pro isn't gonna automatically create a keyframe for me because I didn't change any of these values. I'm keeping these values exactly the way they are. So the previous keyframe had the value at zero and this keyframe is gonna have the value at zero because I want to stay in place to this point so I'll just add a keyframe here, and then I'll move the playhead to the end, go back one frame so that I'm on the last frame of the title, and then I can change this back to, what was it, negative 630? So I'll just click and drag it over like this and type negative 630. There we go. So now I have it so it'll slide into position, and then it'll slide out of position. Let's take a look. I'll move the playhead to the beginning, hit the space bar and play it back. You can see it slides in. And then it holds there until it gets to that keyframe and then starts sliding away again. Okay, so now we've created a very common type of scenario. Now, so far, all we've done is add keyframes and make changes here in the inspector, but you can actually do more than that. For example, if I wanna see the timing of keyframes, if I wanna see where they are in time, then there's another tool for this. It's called the Video Animation Editor. I'm gonna move the playhead over the title. I'll select the title, and then I'm gonna go up to the clip menu and then go down to show video animation. And if this is something you do a lot, you probably do wanna memorize the keyboard shortcut, Control V. But I'm just gonna click this here in the menu, show video animation. As you can see here, there are several different parameters that could be animated, but transform, and it's set to all right now. I'm gonna change this to position. And now I see the keyframes here. There's a keyframe there at the beginning of the title, and then there's that second keyframe for the position two, and then here's the third keyframe, and then there's the fourth keyframe. If you wanna change the position of keyframes in time, so for example, if you wanna have this be a slower animation, the more frames there are between the two keyframes, then the slower the animation is, and vice versa. So if I just click and drag this to the right, I'll just drag it really far to make it very slow, and then I'll move the playhead here, and then hit the space bar, you can see that it very slowly slides into position. If I want to be extra fast, then I can go like this and just have a few frames between them, and then it just zips into position. And we'll play this back. There we go. I'm gonna hit Command-Z a couple times to return it to its original position. And here's an interesting tip. If you actually click the line in between these two, then what happens is I've got this keyframe selected and that keyframe selected at the same time. So then at that point, I can just click and drag and move both of them in time at the same time. So if you wanna do that, that's something that's an option too. So you can kind of bounce back and forth between the inspector and the video animation editor to make some changes. So for example, if I want to move the playhead over that keyframe, then what I can do is come up here and make changes to the value. Right now it's set to zero, but let's say I want it to be something else like 600, for example, type in 600 here. Okay, so that's the position. So you can change the value up here and you can change the timing of the keyframes down here. I'll play this back just so we can see it slide into that position. There we go. You'll notice it immediately starts to drift off to this other keyframes position. That's because there's a difference in values between these two keyframes once this is no longer zero anymore. Once this is set to 600, then this is zero, then it has to go from 600 to zero and it has to do it over the course of these frames here in between them. But I'm gonna change this back to zero again. So we'll just change that to zero. 
play this back, make sure everything's working. And sure enough, it is good. And by the way, there is a third place where you can add keyframes. If you're somebody who likes to work in a visual type of interface, then maybe this is something that would be useful to you too. What you can do is click here to get into your transform modes. And then if you're not seeing this, by the way, if you just click here, you can go to transform, crop or distort, but I'm going to choose transform here. And then you have this little area up here and the center button adds a keyframe wherever the playhead is. And then these buttons go to the next keyframe and the previous keyframe. So if I wanted to add a keyframe here, I can just click this button like that. And then you can see it gets added there, but I'm going to control click on it or right click on it and choose delete keyframe to get rid of it. Now, one thing you'll notice is that I deleted the position keyframe, but you can see that there are other keyframes still there. They're just darkened. If I go to all, then you'll see that I've got keyframes, not just on the position, but also up, up here, you can see under rotation and also scale and anchor point. I don't want any of those. So I'm going to select this and just hit delete on the keyboard. Now, my own personal work style is I don't tend to use this up here very much for adding keyframes because I like to be very specific. I like to add a keyframe to a specific parameter. That's just my own personal preference. So I don't need to have keyframes on rotation and scale if I'm only trying to animate position. I'm going to disable this mode and then I'll close down the video animation editor for the title. But the position of something or the rotation or scale, that's not just everything that you can animate. You can animate all kinds of different parameters. I think this becomes really useful when it comes to animating effects or animating the opacity of something or making those types of changes over time. So as a demonstration, let's add an effect to this video clip. I'll just scroll down here, go to the effects browser. I've got this cold steel effect here. I'm just going to click and drag and drop it on the video clip and then I'll close down the effects browser. So now we've got this really strange looking effect here on the video, but let's say I want to fade this up. I want this effect to become something that's there, but gradually over time. Well, this is one of those situations where because I'm doing something, making some sort of change gradually, it makes sense to use keyframes. So what I can do is select the video clip. And then up here in the video inspector, you can see here's the cold steel. And anytime you hover over a parameter and you see this diamond off to the edge there, that means that that is something that you can add keyframes to. And if you can add keyframes to it, that means you can animate it. So let's try this. I'm going to move the playhead to the very beginning like that. And then I'll add a keyframe on the amount. And let's actually change the value to zero here. So it's going to start with a value, an amount value of zero. And I'll move the playhead forward here a little bit. I've already got a keyframe on this parameter, so I don't need to manually add another one. I don't need to click here. It's going to do it automatically for me. I could if I wanted to. I could click and add one, but I don't need to. What I can do now is just drag this amount slider up. And then you can see Final Cut Pro adds a keyframe for me there. And now we've got the value set here at 100. So once again, I have two keyframes, one at the beginning with the amount at zero, one here at this position with the amount at 100. So now if I move the play to the beginning, hit the space bar and play this back, then we've got the animation. Now there's a couple more quick things I want to show you when it comes to working with the video animation editor in particular. So if I open up the video animation editor, I'll select it, go up to clip, go to show video animation, and then I'll scroll up here so we can see the top part. You can see here's cold steel and I've got the amount selected. So that's what I'm animating right now. There's a keyframe at the very beginning, that little white diamond, and there's a keyframe right here. With some parameters, certain parameters in Final Cut Pro, you can adjust not just the position of keyframes in time, but also the value. And the way you can know if a certain parameter has that capability is if you see this little icon there. So this little pop-up icon, if I click on that, then what happens is this expands. And now I see a little graph showing me what the animation looks like. So you can see here, there's a keyframe and the value is zero there. And then here at this frame, I'll move the playhead to that position. You can see that there's a keyframe there and the value is a hundred. And so you can actually make adjustments to the value here. Instead of having to come up here to the inspector, you can just make adjustments to the value here. So I'll just click and drag and bring this down. And you can add more keyframes. So for example, if I want to add one here, I can option click like that. And then I could add one here an option click, and then I'll drag that one up all the way up to hundred. So now what we've got is a situation where it's going to go from zero to about 50, stay there to that point, And then it's going to go up all the way to hundred. Let's take a look. I'll just hit the space bar and play this back. And sure enough, the values coming in or the effects coming in, then it goes all the way up. I'm going to delete these. So I can just click and drag like this to select these and then hit delete on the keyboard and that'll get rid of them. And then what I can do is drag this one up like this to make it all the way up to hundred. And there's actually another shortcut I want to show you. And that is if you bring up the range tool, 
select the range selection tool like that. Then what you can do is click and drag inside here to select a range. And then you come up to this line and you can just click on it and drag down like that. And it'll automatically add those four keyframes. So there's a keyframe there, 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 and there. So at that point, what you can do is create something like this, where it starts off at 100%. I'll move the play it over here. And then it quickly goes down to zero, stays at zero all the way to this point, and then goes back up to 100 again. Let's take a look. Sure enough, it's going to go all the way down, stay down, and then go all the way back up again. That can be a nice quick way to add four keyframes. I'll go back to the normal select tool and let's delete these keyframes and I'll just select them and hit delete on the keyboard. And then let's also delete this keyframe here at the beginning. I'll just control click or right click and choose delete keyframe. Now, the last thing I want to show you is that if you're in a situation where you're working with a parameter like this, where you can make adjustments to the value, not just to the timing of keyframes, then you also end up with these little fade handles. So instead of having to create keyframes to fade uh, an effect up, for example, then what you can do is just use a fade handle. So I'll just click and drag on this like this, and then I'll drag it in like that. And you can see now what I've got is a fade up type of an effect where it starts off with no effect and then it fades it all the way up to 100. So let's take a look. I'll just hit the space bar and play it back. Sure enough, it's the effect that we'd expect. So the fade handles, they appear when you hover over them like this. So I'll just click and drag that back into its original position. And you have those for both the beginning. I'll command minus, command minus, command minus. That way I can see the end of the clip as well. You have it for the beginning as well as the end of the video clip. So you can very quickly create fade in and fade out type of effects. When you're done with the video animation editor, you can just click this little button to close it down. And then I'll scroll down so I can see my project again. Those are the basics of how keyframes and animation work in Final Cut Pro. Now, in my opinion, if you're going to be doing a lot of animating, if animation is a big part of what you do in your video projects, it probably makes sense to invest in Apple's other app called Motion, which is a $50 app on the Mac App Store. And that has all kinds of tools that help you really fine tune and finesse keyframes and animations. It's built for that. Final Cut Pro definitely has the capabilities of working with keyframes. It's just that Motion has more. Anyway, hopefully that information is useful to you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, I made a mini course on media management and Final Cut Pro that I'm giving away to anyone who gets on my email list. And it covers a bunch of important things about media and Final Cut Pro, like where to store your media files and how to work with proxy media and how to use Final Cut Pro backups and a bunch of other topics. If you want access to this media management course for free, register at this URL, izzyvideo.com forward slash media. I hope all this helps. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.